guys. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about Humera and Embril. So the reason why I'm putting these two meds into one video is because literally I would just end up, like if I did a separate video, they would be the exact same thing. Just take Embril out and put Humera in instead. As usual, I will put the long names for these two in the comments and description because, yeah, we're not about to try and pronounce those. Okay. Um, that said, I had made a video already about how I gave myself the Humira pen injection. So if you're looking for like how to, how someone gives themselves the auto injector pen um, for Humira, that's a separate video. But what both of these are is they are both biologics. So these are medications that work differently from like the methotrexate and like Plaquenil, you know, sulfasalazine and like those kind of those DMARDs and that these end up having to, in Humira and Embril's case, there's no pill form. In order for it to work, it has to go into the fatty tissue. So you would give it to yourself similar to how like, you know, people with diabetes give themselves insulin, okay? So Humira and Embril treat a bunch of different autoimmune things. You know, it's not just rheumatoid arthritis. I've seen it also for, you know, Crohn's. I've seen it for ulcerative colitis. I've seen it for lupus. I've seen it for, you know, all the different subtypes of the juvenile idiopathic arthritis. You know, I've seen it for a bunch. And so with these medications, like I said, you only have the shot form, but you get to choose between what's called a pre-filled syringe and an auto-injecting pen. So pre-filled syringe is basically when the medication's already in there and you have to give yourself the shot. And then the other one is same thing, except it's in an auto injector pen form. Now I already made a video and I'll put a card up um, going over the differences and how to figure out which one would be um, your preference as far as how you want uh, those uh, to how, how you want to give yourself those medications. Um, but as far as how long these takes to work, it's different for everybody. I've seen some people who are new to biologics, like it's their very first medication and they feel a difference as soon as they get the shot. I've seen some people who it takes a few doses for them to start to feel a difference. I've seen some people take up to three months and I've seen some people take up to six months for it to start working. Now, for me personally with Humira, it wasn't what my body needed. So after three months, I didn't feel any sort of difference, but I've seen it work wonders with a lot of other people. So with that said, I like to remind you, everyone's body is different. So with the common side effects with the um, Embril and the Humira, is that just like the DMARDs, they can bring down your, um, you know, it calms down your immune system. So with that said, if you end up, you know, just like with all having these conditions and being on these meds, you know, there is a, there is a higher chance that you could get an infection. And that's the case, whether you're on these meds or if you're on no meds because your immune system's just not working properly. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't, you know, we, we, we wouldn't be in the rheumatology realm, you know. And the one consideration that I like to uh, mention with the Humira and the Embril, these medications have to be refrigerated and they're considered specialty meds. So what that means is you can't just go and walk down to your nearest, your nearest CVS or Walgreens or whatever your in-person pharmacy is and go and pick these up. Don't work that way. These are specialized meds. So they have to come from a specialty pharmacy. And the way that usually happens is you have to get insurance approval um, for them to pay for it. And then your insurance company usually has a specialty pharmacy that they work with. So like some of them are like CVS specialty pharmacy. 
or OptumRx. Uh, I don't know if RioVarx exists or if they blended in with OptumRx. Um, you know, but specialty pharmacies that will mail the medication out to you and it will come in refrigerated and for storage purposes, you need to keep it in the fridge because otherwise that medication ain't going, it, 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 basically if it sits out for too long, it could spoil. Now, when you go to give it to yourself, it's totally fine to leave it in room temperature. I was told for like, you know, 30 minutes to an hour or whatnot. So it's not cold when you give it to yourself. But as far as like keeping these medications in, that's usually how it goes. Bless you. My cat, bless you. My cat has allergies. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so, and then, and then another thing as far as how often these are given, it varies. The average for most people is every other week. So just one time every other week you would give yourself these meds or someone else would give it to you. There are some people who have a unique situation where they would need one like every week. Um, but that's not what I've seen the most. And that's not what I personally experienced with Humira. It was just one shot every other week. I also have noticed that some people do end up tired when they give themselves these shots. And so that wasn't my experience, but one thing that helped, especially when I was working with the kiddos, um, taking it like the day of or the day before an off day. So that way, if you're tired, it's not like, oh my gosh, I gotta go to school. Oh my gosh, I gotta go to work. That seems to help offset that if it ends up making you tired initially. Um, again, since you're not taking it in pill form, um, you don't really hear much about like upset stomach. And then the last thing too, I want to mention, because these are biologics, um, in general, it's not recommended to get any live vaccines on these medications. So for most of us adults, we've been past that because those are the ones that you end up getting when you're little, you know, your chicken pox, your measles, mumps, rubella, like those that you get really little, usually those are live. So anytime it comes to a vaccine, always ask and make sure, highly recommend that it is an inactive or it is not live. Because what happens is for some people, if you happen to be one of the few that is sensitive to it, if you get a live vaccine, you can actually like get sick. And I don't mean like immune response, I mean, like you actually get it and uh, we don't want that. So uh, just uh, something I like to throw out there, especially with the biologics, um, because there, there are some kiddos, you know, that, that get it too, you know, and if, or if you end up having to do a catch up series on something, you know, for school or whatever, just make sure that, you know, if there's a place that's requiring a live vaccine, make sure that you have a, you know, talk to your doctor so they can figure out the best way for you guys to explain that situation because it's generally a no. Anyway, that sums up Humera Nembril, okay? So I hope this was helpful for you guys. And if you have any questions, let me know. See you in the next video. Bye.